Got another question on the enthalpy and entropy topic. So this question focuses on entropy. The link to the questions in the description of the video. So if you want to try it first and then play on for the answers. So part A, the equation is obviously the Gibbs equation. So it's delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Part B, we've got to predict the sign of the entropy change for each of these processes. So the first one, we're going from three moles of gas down to two. So that's a negative entropy change. So minus sign there. Next one, we're going from solid to aqueous. So that's a positive entropy change, getting more disordered. Next one, we're going from liquid to solid. So it's getting more ordered or less disordered. So that's negative. Next one, we're going from solid plus aqueous to aqueous plus gas. So that's positive entropy change because of the formation of gas, essentially. And the final one, we're going from solid and liquid to a solid. So that's a decrease in entropy, a negative entropy sign because it's getting more ordered or less disordered. Part C now, we've got to calculate the standard entropy change for this reaction here. So you can see I've written up the word spa there. That's just my way of remembering that it's the entropy of the products minus the entropy of the reactants. So we need to calculate the sum of the entropies of the products, these things here, and then subtract from that the sum of these. So there's all the numbers in there and the answer comes out at 185. Okay, so moving on to part D, we've got to explain why this process is spontaneous at low temperature but doesn't occur at high temperature. Well, it all boils down to the sort of relative sizes of the delta H and the T delta S term. And effectively, if delta G is less than zero, then the, pro the process is spontaneous. If delta G is greater than zero, it's not spontaneous. I'll just explain this stuff in red. So we're told that it's an exothermic process. So delta H is negative. And from the moles of species in the reaction, you can see you're going for three moles of gas down to two. So it's a negative delta S. So just keep in the back of your mind that this T delta S term, you've got these two minus signs sort of multiplying each other. This whole thing's going to become positive. So what's happening is you're combining this negative delta H with this positive um, term here because of the two minus signs. So if we think about the low temperature, delta H minus T delta S is gonna be less than zero because this term here is gonna be small. So you've got a negative delta H combining with a small positive. So this will stay negative, less than zero. So the process is spontaneous. And then if we just flip that argument, so at high temperatures, this term is gonna be greater Remember, it's positive because of the two minus signs. So when you combine this with the negative delta H, it's actually going to end up making delta G greater than zero. And so the process is not spontaneous. So moving on to part E, we've got to calculate the minimum temperature at which the reaction becomes feasible. So essentially, we've got to find the temperature that makes delta G equal to zero. So there's the sort of derivation of T. Um, you wouldn't have to do that in the exam. You could just remember that equation there. So to get the temperature at which delta G equals zero, it's delta H over delta S. So there's the numbers in. I've written up beware units because that's why I've highlighted these. The units of delta S have got joules in, whereas the units of delta H have got kilojoules in. So you've got to make your units consistent. So I've turned everything into kilojoules. Um, so I've divided the joules by a thousand and that's why I've gone to 0 0.543 for my delta S. Now they haven't specified which temperature units they want so I've given you both answers there. So the temperature, the minimum temperature at which this reaction becomes feasible, in other words when delta G becomes zero, 908 Kelvin or 635 degrees C.